The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, welcome to our webinar, Building a Perfect Audience to Attract Your Best Customers on Facebook. I'm Arna Mitra, Product Marketing Manager for Entrepreneur. One thing we all know is everyone or almost everyone is on Facebook, including your best customers. But I think many of us, including myself, have struggled on how to target our, our ideal audience with Facebook ads. You know, when you go ahead and start creating a Facebook ad, there's so many possibilities on how to build your audience, and sometimes it could feel a bit overwhelming. Well, I'm very excited to have our key guest speaker, Bob Regnieris, join us today to share his expertise. Bob is a digital marketing expert. He's a co-founder of Fee Stories, a video sales and marketing agency. Plus, he is co-author of our most recently published book, The Ultimate Guide to Facebook Advertising. Bob is gonna help us uncover our best customers on Facebook. Plus, he's gonna help us understand how we can engage with them too. Now, before I hand it over to Bob, I just wanna let you know that we'll be dedicating a few minutes at the end for questions. So please go ahead and submit your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll be sure to keep some time at the end for you guys. Now, without further ado, Bob, the floor is yours. All right, hey, thank you. Good to see everybody. We've got a pretty full house today. That's really good. So uh, many people decided to uh, check in and learn about uh, Facebook marketing versus watching election results. So I'm glad to hear that. This is much more productive, I think. Uh, it's gonna be more productive 30 or 40 minutes than uh, you would get uh, watching the news scroll. So, um, I want to make sure, is everybody hearing okay? I just want to make sure yeah. that we're good. good. All right. So, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I have been in Facebook uh, advertising for the last uh, seven years plus. Uh, Facebook advertising uh, really kind of started to mature around that time, and uh, I... I got in. I got in kind of in the early. We call it the pioneer days, um, and it was a little bit of the wild west. Things were good, costs were cheap, and uh, things were relatively easy. And here we are in 2020. And if any of you have done some Facebook advertising, of course, uh, you've probably experienced a high uh, high cost, uh, low uh, conversion rates, and all the difficulties of a mature medium. So. Uh, this uh, webinar series, uh, we're going to do three webinars here in the next few days, uh, which is meant to equip you and give you some ideas to help you uh, be more successful as a Facebook advertiser and maybe introduce you to some strategies and some concepts that you uh, maybe even heard about before. So what I'm going to do is switch over to presenter mode and we're going to get into the material. And again, if you have any uh, questions at all. Um, I'm going to pause in between sections. I'm going to look through the questions. So give me a little, um, uh, you know, give me a little time to answer your question, but I'm going to try to answer it after I get through a few slides and want to make sure that we try to get to everybody's question and answer it to the best of your abilities. All right. So I am going to switch over here. If you just give me one second. All right. All right, well, let's get this bigger for all y'all. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about how to build a perfect audience to attract your best customers on Facebook, okay? So the one thing that we want to keep in mind as we're doing our Facebook campaigns and, and quite fact, you know, in any sort of advertising that you're doing, uh, our goal is to build highly responsive ad campaigns that deliver the right content at the right time to the right audience. Um, seems rather simplistic, and I don't want to uh, tell you that I'm giving you something elementary here, but the idea is I see a lot of mistakes in my coaching clients when they first come to me that they're timing their content incorrectly and it's affecting their results. So this is a mantra that I have for all my coaching students, uh, anyone that goes through my courses, we're trying to build these campaigns that deliver the right content at the right time to the right audience. So this is a concept called the customer awareness timeline. Uh, I talk about this in the book very early on. Hopefully uh, you all get a chance to get a copy of it. Um, the customer awareness timeline is a concept that was introduced by uh, a brilliant marketer, Eugene Schwartz, uh, back in 1966. Um, I, I tend to adhere to timely principles, or timeless principles rather, uh, things that aren't fly by night. 
Uh, this happens to be a principle and a fundamental that has, has really affected uh, most advertising here in the modern era. And it's a really good thing to go through here as we're approaching um, not only our Facebook campaigns, but any campaigns whatsoever. Uh, the customer awareness timeline is just this. You've probably heard it referred to as the customer journey, but the idea is your customer comes to you or is made aware of you at some point and they are on this timeline. Most people that you're going to come in contact with are unaware of you. Uh, they're also unaware that they have a problem. Uh, most advertising, as you know, is to satisfy some sort of need or solve some sort of problem. So one of the issues that advertisers have if they've done, let's say, Google advertising, is that they're trying to take the principles that work in Google and apply them to Facebook. Well, the, the Google advertisers really live in this area here, which is problem aware. And that is a person has, is essentially aware of a problem uh, that they need to solve or a desire that they're looking to fulfill. And they go to Google, they type in a keyword, and they begin their search. And that's how you target people based on problems they have. We don't have that luxury as a Facebook advertiser. In fact, Facebook is what we call an interruption media. So what we are actually doing is we're interrupting people as they're looking at pictures of family, friends, arguing about politics, you know, all the things that people do and, and spend time on on Facebook. So it's very much the analogy of, let's say we're at a large gathering. These days we don't do that, but let's say it's 25 people or less. Um, there's family and friends, they're talking, they're having a good time. You barge through the door and try to sell them a used car. Okay, you would be an unwelcome guest at that party. Um, that's what a Facebook advertiser is like. Uh, we think that everybody should respond to our ad, everybody should love our product. But in fact, what we really are is an unwelcome guest at their party. And so we have quite a job to do to overcome that. So when we approach advertising, we need to be considering at what point in the timeline is our customer. So when we think of advertising to a cold audience, we're looking at the stage here. We have to assume that they're unaware of us. So when somebody's unaware of us, we have to make a proper introduction. We have to hook them. We have to get to know them. This stage here, problem aware, solution aware, your solution aware, is a process of nurturing. Um, when your prospect is in this stage of their journey with you, we need to put advertising in front of them that nurtures them and moves them from this side of the timeline to this side of the timeline. What we're trying to do is move them from this stage to the most aware. And at this point, your prospect has narrowed the choice to a few providers, including you. So they're in very much the consideration stage. And so our advertising at this stage also has to be different. Let me show it to you in a different way. So we're all, um, maybe, we're, maybe we're all aware, but I want you to be aware or at least pay attention to the concept of funnels. Um, top of funnel is usually a very large audience. Um, tofu is kind of a way we abbreviate it. Middle of funnel or middle of your mofu is a much smaller audience. Bottom of funnel is a small audience. And if we superimpose the timeline here, we're moving somebody from top of the funnel where they're unaware of us down to the bottom of funnel where they're aware of us and our solution. Another way to look at it is this. Typically, we're reaching a cold audience of millions of people down, let's say they watch a video ad of ours. Thousands of people may watch that video. Out of that thousands that watch our video, maybe hundreds visit our website, and then maybe 10 of those people buy. Okay, that's, that's what this looks like visually. Okay, I'm going to pause real quick here. I'm going to look and see if I have any questions. Give me a minute to bring that up. All right. Okay, so just there's one question from Sean. Is this mostly about using the ads or organic growth? It's definitely uh, all about paid advertising. So um, sorry about my webcam. It's a little fuzzy there. Let's see here. Uh, how to market this used books. Uh, we'll probably talk about maybe that concept as we go through. Um, okay. All right, so there's some very specific questions. I'll probably jump to those in the end. All right, very good. Thanks, uh, 
give me a chance to take a look at those. I'm going to jump back into presentation. All right. Sorry about that. My computer is messing up here. I think when I opened the question, it definitely did not give me. I'm sorry, guys. One second here. Sean, are you still on? I'm having issues with my presentation mode. Are you able to see my slides? Hi, Bob. I'm not able to see your slides right now. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna do Try this one more time. All right, just bear with me. It looks like go to webinar, close my slides. So I'm going to open up. I'm going to reopen the presentation and I'm going to be more careful this time. There we go. I think we got it now. How's that looking, Sean? That looks good to me, Bob. All right, perfect. Sorry about that. All right, so sorry about that, folks. Uh, we'll jump back in. So we're going to talk next about timing your content. So taking into consideration what we talked about uh, previously. So. Um, let's let's break this down into in terms of what are we going to do with our advertising depending on where they are on the customer awareness timeline. So let's think about cold traffic or top of funnel, very large audience. What are the goals of your ads at this stage? Uh, a few things. Number one, we want to get attention. All right. Um, one of the things we got to do when we're interrupting somebody on a particular media is we want to get their attention and we want to get them to pay attention to our advertising specifically. All right, one of the things is they are on one particular media and if we want to drive them to our website, um, before we can do that, we have to get their attention, okay? And then as we do that, we need to show that we understand a problem that they have. So part of this is going to be in how we target our audience and what we say in our ad, what we say in our video, if we use a video-based ad, to get them to get attention and, and know or at least get the idea that we know what they're going through and in that way we're identifying their need now middle of funnel this is somebody who's already let's say responded to an ad they visited your website um, they've watched some videos that you've put out they, they have some sort of awareness of you uh, what do we need to do at this stage we need to build rapport and nurture them so for those of you that are selling very simple products, your nurturing window is probably gonna be short. If you are selling something that's more complex or pricey, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a longer nurturing window. So you're gonna get their attention top of funnel. Those people that come in and show interest in you, uh, we're gonna need to have a nurturing sequence of ads that move them closer to being a prospective customer, all right? And so in this nurturing process, what we have to do is we have to demonstrate our competency, demonstrate our credibility, and increase the desire of the prospect. So we need to be building that anticipation in them through our advertising to move them from being unaware of us to being aware of us, and getting us staged as a potential solution to their problem, okay? 
bottom of funnel. These are small, okay? These are people that have been in our middle of the funnel or a nurturing sequence for a time. So what do we need to do at the bottom of the funnel? Well, we need ads that do things like answer objections. So we, we are probably trying to move them towards a sale. Uh, most customers have certain objections uh, that we need to overcome. Uh, we need to make sure we have a really good, clear explanation of benefits and give a clear call to action. So if you are running an e-commerce store, let's say on a Shopify platform or WooCommerce, uh, we want to be driving them to the product page and let them know we need them to add that product to their cart. Uh, if you're a service uh, business and you try to generate appointments for your practice, we want to drive them to the appointment page and let them know the next step is to book an appointment with you. If you're doing lead generation, maybe giving away a tool, a, a piece of software, something they download, we want to let them know, go to this page, download my free report, download this calculator. Uh, we need to be very uh, clear and specific about our calls to action. And in terms of defining audiences, this is this is really critical. So we, we got our structure in place for timing our content, but who are we going to show it to? And the very first thing we should do before we even sit down to write an ad is really sit down and figure out how, how are we going to connect to our audience? What do we know about them? So the very first place you need to start is know who your customers are and know why they will buy your product. A lot of people spend too much time on product creation. Um, we, we put all this time, money, energy into creating a product, and then we think very little about who's going to buy it. Um, we think we do, but when your answer is that so many people are going to buy this product that it doesn't matter, then we've, then we've made a big mistake. I see too many people put very little effort into understanding who their target customers are and really defining what they need um, and in doing so really sabotage their Facebook marketing campaigns before they even start. So we want to sit down and we want to figure out who's our customer and be very clear and specific and write out why they're going to buy our product. So for example, you know, who follows Entrepreneur Magazine, entrepreneur.com, all the properties of, of Entrepreneur, and why do they follow them? Okay. So as Entrepreneur puts together new products and new offerings, uh, you know, if they're going to publish a new book or put articles in this month's magazine or content on their website, uh, what they're thinking about is who is really following us, all right, and why are they following us? So this particular webinar is put together because they know that on a regular basis, there is a large segment of customers who want to know how can I market my business better on Facebook. Um, most of the people that follow Entrepreneur um, are not corporate Silicon Valley type people. They're uh, in the trenches, serial entrepreneurs. They're working on their business. Um, they're serving customers. They're marketing. Uh, these are the types of people that read and engage with entrepreneur um, media. So they have a real good idea of who our customers are and what type of content do we need to put in front of them to satisfy and keep the audience engaged with us. I think great advertising is focused on customer transformation. Um, the more that our product and services can demonstrate a transformational, uh, uh, kind of a transformational event or do something transformational in our customers' lives, uh, the more effective our advertising is gonna be. Uh, certainly you can see this in the way um, exercise companies uh, like Peloton, um, you know, they're, they're marketing kind of an experience um, they're marketing a, a lifestyle. They're marketing, hey, you, you spend you know, every morning with us in this community, and this is the result you're going to get. Um, most really great companies, all their ads are really geared towards, here's what your life is like now, and here's what your life is going to look like after you use our product. And so those are the types of things we need to be thinking as we develop our advertising campaigns, think about our ad copy, thinking about who we're going to target. Okay. And so again, entrepreneur media is thinking, you know, how, how are we transforming the people that engage with us? Um, you know, the books we write, the articles we write, um, the webinars we put on, all these things they are thinking about in terms of transforming you know they're not here just to educate all right that's just a component education is one component of transformation 
what what they need to do at a deeper level is you know are the are these entrepreneurs taking this knowledge applying it to their business and making more money that's essentially what entrepreneurs are looking to do is we are trying to generate profits from the knowledge that we gain so everything entrepreneur puts in front of us is really geared towards education implementation and transformation okay that's what they want all right so I'm gonna try to not blow away my screen here, but let's see here. I'm gonna just go through and look, see if we have any questions. I know some people are saying that they're having some issues hearing. I think we're pretty much okay. They would um, they would jump in. All right, I think we're doing pretty good here. Um, so let's talk about audiences. So audiences for purposes of, of Facebook is um, audiences is the way they define targeting. So audiences are the list that you can create within Facebook. And we use this to number one, target, all right, and number two, model. Um, Facebook has the ability to, uh, if, we've, if you've run a Facebook ad before, uh, you can go in and define your audience by things they like or uh, things they associate with. We call that demographics and psychographics. Uh, but you can also import lists into Facebook, things like your customer list, your email list, um, and you could target ads to those individual lists, and you can use those lists to model and create what are called lookalike audiences. All right, so I'm going to go through that here real quick. So let's talk about custom audiences. So these are the lists that you can upload into Facebook. It's not every type of list, obviously, but these are the main types of custom audiences that we can build within the Facebook platform. Uh, so the first one is customer list. A customer list is not just customers. It can be any sort of list you have. It could be your email list out of your uh, MailChimp account. Um, you know, it could be an export out of Salesforce. Um, it could be a product, I'm sorry, it could be a customer list that you export on Shopify. Um, any type of list that has like at least an email address can be imported into Facebook. Um, you can also import uh, and include like first and last name. You can include the, the phone number. You can include city, state, zip, and country. Um, you can put that additional data on to help Facebook match. So when you upload a list into Facebook, what they're actually doing is they're saying, okay, here is an email address, all right? So bob123 at gmail.com. Facebook is going to take that email address and go, okay, we know that's associated with Bob, this Facebook user, all right? So they're looking for matches. And what you're able to do is then run an ad to Bob all right, directly because there's a match on the list. So it's a really effective way at not only reaching your customers or reaching your prospects through ads, all right, it's also a great way to model, all right, and I'm gonna go over that in the next slide. There's other lists that you can create that allow you to both create advertisements for and model. The next one is a website custom audience. So you can track using the Facebook Pixel all the people that visit your various websites. So you can track all the people that visit for any length of time, people that visit specific pages. All right, those are all good things to track. Uh, the third audience is a video custom audience. So when you put a video on your Facebook page or you run a video ad in your newsfeed, um, you are actually able to track, all right, in aggregate, um, the number of people that watch that. So if you put a video ad in front of 100,000 people, and a thousand of those people watch that video all the way through, you can retarget those thousand people, okay, because Facebook keeps track of who watches those videos and for how long. All right, the next type of custom audience is an app custom audience. So if you have an, uh, if, if you're in a business that has a mobile app, so you can track people that use your app, people that register uh, with inside your app, make purchases within your app, uh, people who just simply log on to your app. Um, those are all events that can be tracked and, and built into a custom audience on Facebook. Uh, the, the fifth type, a fifth type, is an engagement. So if somebody comes to your page and likes a post, uh, comments on a post, shares a post, whether that's on Facebook or Instagram, uh, you can build custom audiences of those folks as well. 
The second level audience is lookalike audiences. And this is what I was talking about, is when we upload these lists, let's say we upload a list of customers, what we're able to do is create what's called a lookalike audience, which is a model, all right? It is modeled after some sort of set of data. So a customer list is a fantastic audience for you to model because what you're essentially doing is you're saying, hey, Facebook, here's a list of people who have bought from me before, all right? And what I want you to do is go find me more people that look like these folks, all right? Uh, it's really transformational in the way that we target because Facebook knows <laughs> a lot about its users like we all know this right um, not only does it know what we like by the pages we like the people we follow uh, the things that we comment on all of the activity within the Facebook universe and in the Instagram universe is all tracked by Facebook so we have essentially by our activity formed this this behavior profile within the apps themselves but here's the other part because our activity is tracked outside, meaning the Facebook pixel being installed on, on millions and billions of websites around the world, they also know how we act and what we buy um, off of Facebook. So, you know, if we're a frequent electronics buyer, all right, they're gonna know that about us. And if an electronics company is running advertising and they create a lookalike audience, it's quite likely that you're gonna be pulled into that because they know that you have bought um, electronics before and maybe you've seen this before um, I just went and bought a new pair of golf spikes um, I want to get ready for next spring and as soon as I bought those golf spikes what happened was is I started seeing all kinds of golf ads in my newsfeed and the reason that happened is because Facebook went ah Bob's in the market for golf supplies golf wear you know whatever so i started seeing uh ads for um golf lessons golf products um uh golf equipment all right so i basically gave a behavioral signal to facebook and so all these companies that i've never heard of before essentially put me um you know is our advertising using a lookalike audience and it's quite likely that i'm part of that lookalike because i gave a signal to facebook really powerful for us as advertisers, really creepy for those of us who are consumers, okay? Um, prospects are another list you could update. Um, you know, what, we're, what we like to do is when we have somebody's email address, we're emailing them, you know, with MailChimp or Infusionsoft or whatever, uh, but you can also advertise to them on Facebook. Uh, so maybe they're not getting your emails anymore or they don't open your emails. Well, we can have another place to try to reach them and we could run ads to our prospect list. Visitors as well. So visitor custom or, or website custom audiences, um, we're able to uh, not only target those folks, but we can create lookalikes of people that visit. So if we don't have a customer list, if we don't have a prospect list, we're just starting from scratch, um, we could run some traffic to our site, get a number of visitors onto a list, and we can create a lookalike of that. Okay, that's another way to start. Um, we could also um, model lookalikes after people who use an app, all right? So if we wanna find more people to download and use our app, we can create a lookalike of people that do that. Um, same thing with videos. Um, we wanna find more people that watch our videos. So if we have more videos to show, if we're driving people in, if we're, let's say, a content-based business, um, we can, you know, drive more people in by creating lookalikes of people that already watch our videos. So lookalike audiences are really powerful top of funnel strategy uh, to target people, um, and it's really effective. So just in terms of the lookalike audiences, uh, I prefer um, if you have customers available, um, you want to create a one percent lookalike of those. Um, if you don't have customers, then do prospects. Okay. Um, if you if you don't have customers or prospects uh, right now, you can start by targeting some of the top uh, traffic to your site. So you have the ability within Facebook to create a 1% lookalike of the top 25% of visitors to your site over a given time frame. Um, or you could do 1% lookalike of people who watch 95% of the videos that you put in your uh, video ad campaigns. All right. 
And then the level three are interest audiences. And these are the ones that we're probably most for, uh, familiar with. Uh, these are built from aggregating the demographic and psychographic data that you know Facebook knows about its users. So uh, this is when you go into your ad set level and you you know type in um, let's say you're a porch dealer. Um, you say hey I want to I want to target people that are interested in Porsches and maybe you add like interested also in Ferraris or Jaguars or other types of sports cars. Um, if you're an exercise company um, like a Peloton, you know, maybe you're going after people that enjoy cycling, uh, workouts, uh, physical fitness. Those are the types of things that you can do at the interest level. And then you could also um, go in and narrow it down by demographics. So if you're a local type business, um, you could create some interest, but then also say, I only want to target people that are in St. Louis, Missouri or in the state of Texas, okay? And then you could also say gender, um, you can go male or female, and then you could also choose, hey, you know, nobody from the age of 18 to 35 buy my product. Um, I only market to people that are like, you know, 35 and older, or we're only marketing to seniors, or we only market to 18 to 24 year olds. Um, you could choose that type of detail in your targeting so that you can narrow down your audience. Just some tips for creating uh, interest audiences. Go as wide as possible to take advantage of the optimizer. What I mean by that is Facebook obviously has an incredible amount of data, an incredible amount of intelligence about its users. And the more people that you allow it to target, um, the more likely it's gonna find somebody who's um, really good for your business. So I don't like to have really small audiences of folks. Like I wanna have larger audiences of folks and let Facebook go in, use its artificial intelligence to find within that group the people that are most likely to take the action I want. So whether I want them to buy a product, download something, watch a video or whatever, um, I wanna go as wide as I possibly can and let Facebook do the sorting instead of me trying to be micro-targeting. <laughs> I'd also be aware of what I call overly generic interests. Um, you know, I, I mentioned in the last example, uh, if you're if you're a company that's selling an exercise product, uh, physical fitness is is an example of an overly generic interest um, that could include just thousands of things. Um, you know, uh, it could be people that like to walk. It could be people that like to bike. It could be people that like to, you know skydiving. You know, it could, it could be a, a bunch of different things. Um, Overly generic interests um, don't do you much good. So you want to try to be a little bit more uh, distinct about the interests that you're trying to target. Um, I know a lot of people try to target using job titles, like if you market to dentists or attorneys or something like that. Um, I found that the job titles that Facebook has um, really aren't that great in terms of being accurate um, because it's, it's essentially a self-reported field. Uh, so a lot of people um, like to, to mess around with this field, but also most people um, aren't filling in their job titles these days, so it's really not an accurate way to target. Um, but always try to make sure that you, uh, that you overlay with demographic data. Um, if your product is not for somebody like um, in the 18 to 20 t 18 to 22 year old time uh, bracket, um, age bracket, you know, exclude them. Um, if your product is not for somebody who's a senior citizen or it is for a senior citizen, you know, make sure you either exclude them or include them specifically. Uh, so you're not wasting a bunch of money on people who are uh, absolutely uninterested in your product. All right, I'm gonna go out and see if we can answer some questions again. Um, if you don't have a copy of the book, by the way, it is available in most major uh, book outlets. Uh, my website, ultimatefb.com, has a link to it. Uh, also has a uh, uh, bonus. Uh, I've interviewed uh, 10 of the authors that helped contribute to the book. Uh, some really interesting interviews, um, some really kind of cool things that uh, we were able to share together. So it's additional training, additional strategies, and just some really good conversation with entrepreneurs like yourself. Um, so Ultimate FB is the place you want to go to uh, check those out. So I am going to get my webcam going.
and I'm going to open up my question box. All right. Let's see here. All right. So the first question uh, was asked kind of early on. So, you know, how do we use Facebook to market used books? Okay. So I'm assuming that um, you have probably not like, I'm, I'm assuming that you have used books in a particular category. Um, if you're able to kind of niche down um, and say, hey, you know, we sell um, like nonfiction, um, av probably more specifically, like we, we market um, like medical books or, you know, the more you can niche it down, then the more you could be able to target and go after those folks. Um, the one thing I will be wary of, though, is that used books, I don't know what the margins are. Um, you know, what, what you really need to do is kind of build a following of people that love books. Um, maybe start a Facebook group and, and run ads to get people to join the group. Uh, people maybe who love kind of hard to get vintage type books, you know, create a, create a page, create a group that's around people that love books and maybe don't get books from the traditional outlets like Amazon or Barnes and Noble, whatever. Um, you know, create a community or create an environment where you, you run ads to get people into the group, uh, maybe get them on an email list and then introduce them to your products. You know, maybe it's a book of the month or you have cycles of inventory. Um, that's the way I would do that. If you have something niche like that, that's kind of low margin, um, you want to try to build community around it and, and build excitement around it that way. So focus in on building community versus selling products. Okay. Uh, do you feel Facebook is good for medical service? Absolutely. Um, I, I've had dozens of clients over the last few years um, in various aspects of medical, both uh, I would say Western medicine and uh, natural or Eastern medicine. Um, be very careful though about um, HIPAA and uh, Facebook is very, uh, very strict about uh, marketing on medical conditions. Um, so for instance, if, if you uh, run a clinic that helps treat people that let's say have diabetes, um, you cannot run an ad uh, that says have diabetes, <laughs> right? You would think that would be the easy thing to do. Um, they will not let you do that uh, because that's called over-personalization. Um, so you need to be real careful about how you do that. Um, you know, maybe if uh, you can maybe give a little bit more information about the specific medical service, I can give you more specific information about how you would market it. All right, let's go through here. Okay. So here's a question about how, how can you use Facebook to market your product if you lack finances? Um, I think kind of the, the previous answer about the used books would be applicable here is, is trying to use Facebook to build a community. Um, you know, if you're limited in finance, you gotta be real careful about, you know, how much you're spending on advertising. Um, I didn't dig into it this webinar, but my next webinar, I'm gonna talk about retargeting and, I think retargeting is one way that pretty much every business who is doing any type of uh, inbound marketing uh, could go in. I've got clients that are running retargeting campaigns where they're spending about $5 a day. And all they're doing is reconnecting with people who visit their website. And um, it's a really effective way and it's a really high return uh, on investment type of activity. So um, stay tuned for the next webinar and we're going to definitely talk about that. Uh, video ad, where do you see the audience? Okay, so the audience is at the ad set level. Um, you know, I'll, re I'll refer you to the book where I go in really great detail um, about you know, how to create uh, your campaigns, uh, set up your ad sets to define your targeting, and uh, the ad level to do your ad copy. So I'm, I'm going to push that off to my book because I spent 19 months writing it. All right. Um, Um, so there's a question about privacy. So if you upload these uh, lists to uh, Facebook, doesn't uh, Facebook um, basically own our data? Well, um, yes and no. Uh, the data that you upload is actually encrypted. 
and it's 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 matched on something called a hash. So um, there's no like individual type of information that Facebook knows other than what they know um, about that user and what that user has done according to their behaviors on Facebook and through their pixel. Um, so they don't own that particular record, um, but their terms of use allow you to do that. Um, I, I think it's I think the risk of giving Facebook that information far outweighs the risk of not um, if you're looking to uh, make money through Facebook advertising. All right, what is a good audience size? So that's a really great question. Um, you know, I, I need to get into real specifics, but when you create a lookalike audience here in the United States, what it does is it creates an audience of, of about 2 million people. And 2 million people for like a national audience is really good. Uh, if you are starting to market into a smaller, let's say, uh, tighter geographic area, um, you could still run ads to an audience that's like 10,000 people, but just know that you're going to uh, basically saturate that audience really quickly. So, you know, even if you put just a few dollars to it every day, Facebook is essentially going to show those ads to as many people in that tight audience as possible. And then what happens is it's called ad fatigue. So if you see a particular advertisement over and over, what's going to happen is you're going to essentially become blind to it. And so when you have large audiences, you don't have to change your ads as often. When you have small audiences, 10,000, 20,000, even 100,000, you're going to find that you're going to need to keep changing your ad copy frequently so you combat uh, the condition called ad fatigue. Okay. Um, how much does Facebook ads cost? So that is a completely relative term. Um, Facebook ads are, are uh, the cost of a Facebook ad is, is based on three things. Number one, uh, it's based on your budget, how much you're willing to spend. It's based on how good your ad is at generating click-throughs. And it's based on how well your advertising converts on your landing page. And it's also then a function of all the money that's coming in from other advertisers. So, you know, I want to run an ad on Facebook. You want to run an ad on Facebook. What actually happens is, is we're all competing for a limited space. So the more people that compete for limited space, the more they're willing to budget and put into your advertising. You know, it's, it's basic economics 101. So limited space, more money, costs go up. So a phenomenon that we've had as Facebook advertisers within the last two months, and especially the last like four weeks, is all the election money. So not just the presidential candidates, but senatorial, congressional, local, state candidates were all advertising on Facebook. And so what that did was it drove the cost of advertising up for everybody. All right. So more people were demanding the limited space and it drove the cost of advertising uh, way up. Now, we just saw on um, Wednesday, we saw the cost of our ads drop. So the, the conversion rate of our ad didn't change, but since it was cheaper to run, our costs were down. So I, I'll say this, Facebook doesn't measure cost in terms of cost per click. It's certainly a measurement that we can get, but Facebook uses a term called CPM. Um, it's, it's called cost per thousand impressions. So the, the amount you're charged is based on uh, called CPM or the, the, num the dollar amount it takes to show that ad to 1,000 people. And so that's, that's a column that you could see and that number is gonna be anywhere between like a dollar up to $150 CPM. And it really depends on your audience. The larger your audience in general, the lower your cost of advertising is. The more limited your audience is, generally the higher your cost of advertising is going to be, relatively, you know, based on your budget. Okay. All right. So uh, this question is related to okay, they're targeting specifically attorneys. So, um, like I said. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily trust attorneys to put their job title on their Facebook profile, but there are things that they do put on there that would indicate that they're uh, likely attorneys. Um, uh, bar associations and um, also uh, the alma mater of their law school. 
So I've had coaching clients that have been successful advertising to attorneys uh, using specific law schools and bar associations for particular states and things like that. Um, that's a really good way to do it. The other way um, is if you happen to have, let's say, an email list of attorneys, doing a lookalike audience to that um, will produce a lookalike, not of 100% attorneys, but the lookalike audience will be saturated uh, with attorneys, and you should be able to get some good traction from that. Okay. Um, so question about, can I target another Facebook group's customers? Um, you cannot target a Facebook group, but you can target a Facebook page. Um, Facebook's taken away a lot of that type. We used to be able to target pages that had very small followings. Uh, Facebook's done away with a lot of that targeting. They're really pushing us towards uh, using lookalike audiences because they, they do end up costing us much less. Um, but if the page is big enough and it's got a lot of followers, you can type that page name into the interest or detailed targeting area. And if Facebook has made that available, it'll show up as an option. You'll be able to click on it. It'll also tell you how many people are in that audience. Okay. How would I use Facebook and Instagram to market designer clothes and sneakers? Okay. Um, well, obviously, Facebook and Instagram would be really, really great for that. Um, so you've got a base of followers already, which is great. Um, you could likely create a lookalike audience of people who are already following you and people who are engaging with you. Um, if you have customers, if you have an email list, that's another good model. But uh, what you really want to do uh, if you're in a retail space, uh, especially clothing, Highly visual, you want to use great images and video ads to look alike audiences of, like I said, your followers or website visitors or customers or email list. Um, that's the best way to market um, that type of business. So best approach for a startup that has no real user data. So, okay. So that's a great question. You're actually going to have to invest a little bit in what I call content marketing, um, putting together blog articles or videos if you're more comfortable being in front of a camera, and, and marketing your content to those folks. And what you're looking for are people who, let's say you put an article in front of them, you want to collect a website audience of people that engage with your blog or watch your videos. And so you're going to be spending maybe a couple dollars a day, three, four, five dollars a day maybe. And over time, what's going to happen is that audience is going to build up, all right? And then you can start marketing to the people who have shown interest in you. And then you could start modeling that traffic, all right? So like, um, depending on how many people are coming in, maybe you just model the number of, maybe you model people who visited you over a 30-day period, create that lookalike audience, and then target that. Uh, how do we use Facebook to promote directly marketed products? Um, I'm assuming that's like MLM or direct sales. Um, the best way to do those types of businesses is to use Facebook to develop community or relationships. You want to build a list, um, especially if you're uh, needing conversations with those folks. Um, your best bet is to create some sort of a download or reason for them to want to give them your, their contact information and then try to get them off of Facebook and market to them through email and phone and things like that. Uh, how could Facebook be applied to real estate or construction? Um, kind of wide, wide markets. Um, from a construction standpoint, uh, usually it's uh, related to something like if you're building a deck or you, you do like kind of a four se or a three season room or, um, you know, maybe you do driveways or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, usually that's uh, limited to a geographic area. And what you're going to do is uh, use visuals. So typically construction is making something really cool or, or good or aesthetic looking. Um, you want to market by showing finished products. And um, you can't do this with humans. You can't show before and after pictures on Facebook, uh, but you can show before and after pictures of, of things. So um, uh, 
one of our clients is a pond installer. Um, and so, you know, they're showing off what the ponds look like. And th this is not just a tiny pond. You know, these are usually kind of, you know, they're, they're architectural. They have a lot of stone work, a lot of plants and, you know, water fountains and things like that. Um, they do a lot of visual type advertising to their local market and they drive them to a page where there's um, also testimonials from their happy customers and they're basically just you know asking for people to call or fill out a form to get an estimate so uh, visuals before and after are real good in those industries all right all right so another question from a, a retailer i sell colorful activewear so again, I think what you have to do is um, you're not going to necessarily be able to do an interest-based audience. What you want to try to do is lead with the visuals and and build an audience of people that uh, engage with that content. So uh, you know you could take a picture of you or a model uh, in some of your activewear um, and you know put that out and 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 market that to you know, you could you can market it to people that, let's see, you, you still have some ability within Facebook to target people that um, are, are active shoppers of that type of category. So what I would do is look for that in the interest uh, section of your ad set, uh, target those folks, and then build an audience of people that like or comment on your post of the products that you're showing, okay? And then obviously what you want to do is you want to drive them to your e-commerce store and and obviously try to sell them, get them to put something into their cart and check out. Um, let's see. All right, here's an interesting one. And by the way, if I don't get to your question, um, uh, entrepreneur is going to give me uh, a list of all these questions and one of the things that I promise to do uh, for you folks and for them is to do video Q&A so I'm gonna take these and over time I'm gonna ask the question I'm gonna basically ask the question on camera and then reply in video and we're gonna put that out on the entrepreneur uh, space so that'll be pushed out um, here's the question uh, what about local automotive services in a large metro area? Okay, uh, collision repair, painting, things like that. Yeah, um, you know, definitely, you know, limit your geographic stuff. Um, but what you want to be doing is using kind of that problem aware type of art marketing. So you're, you're going to be interrupting somebody on Facebook, but you're going to be kind of targeting the specific things that um, – you know people are are looking at so if you're in an area let's say now um you know people uh if you're in a in a winter area uh you're probably going to be marketing kind of the winter checkup right you know your battery are you, is your battery good are your tires good enough um you know those types of things when you switch to the summer it could be you know an air conditioning checkout um, you know, get your suspension checked. You know, you want to have some deals and some things like that. Um, checkups and, you know, those types of things work real well in that industry. You know, put that offer in front of people, drive them to a page where they call. Um, it's very important that you get them to call um, or, you know, you get them on the phone because you want to bring them into the into the into the business. All right. Um, so those types of things work real, real well in those markets. All right. We got a couple minutes left. Let me see if I can take a couple couple more here. Okay. Um, all right. So a follow up to the the medical service. So it's a it's a nurse case management remote patient monitoring. I know my target. I just need to get the attention. So. Um, you know, I, I think specifically, Sherry, I think what you want to do is you want to kind of tell a story. Um, I, I don't know if this is like a service on behalf of a family, let, let's say for an elderly or um, a disabled type uh, person. Um, and really what your marketing is, is, is well-being and, and uh, sense of, you know, sense of comfort. Uh, maybe you're probably marketing to the family members of these folks. So uh, one of the things that works real well is, is storytelling, case study, testimonials work real well. 
um, that if that engages, you know, let, let's say uh, if I have an aging parent and that's kind of your market, um, you're going to tell the story. Uh, you're going to hear my story of, you know, you're this particular business. You have Sherry, you know, takes care of my mom and, you know, such and such happened and they were there to take care of it. You know, storytelling's probably the best way to go in that type of industry. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go. All right. A question about boosting posts. So um, I'm not a big fan necessarily of clicking the boost button. Uh, the reason is, is that it's a really easy way for Facebook to take 50 bucks away from you. Um, ads. Ads generally need to be written to a specific target for a specific purpose. Um, it really kind of doesn't uh, adhere to the whole customer awareness timeline. And unless you run some ads before, it's generally pretty hard to target those. Um, so I don't recommend boosting a post. I would prefer that you learn the skill of um, going into ad manager and creating ads for specific audiences. Um, I will say that um, if you do have kind of a large following on your Facebook page already, uh, boosting a post is a good way to make sure people see it um, if your only goal is really to get them to engage more. Uh, but if you're looking to get them to a landing page or a website or any sort of offer, um, I, I'd really want you to learn the skill of going through the ad manager to do that. Okay. All right. Um, there are a lot of questions. It's so awesome. There is so many of you on this call. Um, I'm going to be doing another, I think, two webinars next week, uh, part two and part three of this. Um, I will try to get to as many of these questions as possible through a video Q&A. Um, so it's been great to uh, chat with you all today. We're going to hopefully see many of you back on next week. And I think there's probably some closing information here uh, that uh, we need to hear, right? Hi, Bob. I think that's all. Uh, we can go ahead and end the webinar now. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and we'll see you next time. All right.